Welcome to the CX Green Room, where we share behind the scenes level insight into notable CX topics. Thanks for joining us today. The theme of today's show Good is beer. Gig CX. It's a quick but temporary, is it rather? This is a question, not a statement. <laughs> is it a quick but temporary pivot in response to the pandemic or hmm. is it a permanent shift that is going to help make CX even better in multiple ways. That's what we're going to talk about today. I'm co-host Ginger Conlon, Thought Leadership Director at Genesis, and with me to tell you more about today's topic and to introduce our star speaker is co-host Claire Beatty. Thank you, Ginger. Welcome to the CX Green Room. We are delighted today to have a special guest Daryl Addington, VP of Market Marketing from Limitless, join us. Before we dive in with all the questions, uh, Daryl, would you just give us a quick overview about Limitless, what you do? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Limitless is a company that was founded in 2016, and its mission is to provide gig into customer experience space. So as you, as you know, the gig economy is taken off all around the world for a number of different things, you know, getting people places, uh, delivering packages in the last uh, holiday season and food, of course. And um, and the founders, Megan and Roger, um, felt like gig was a great fit for customer experience. And so they founded Limitless with that in mind. And um, yeah, that's what we're going to talk about today is how does gig fit into customer experience and how can you leverage it within your business to improve improve what you're doing with your customers? Fantastic. So before we do that, the, the green room is a place where the CX heavyweights hang out. And we know those heavyweights, they really have some big demands for backstage. When we had uh, Dr. Natalie Petterhoff uh, last month, she had uh, us running around for red tulips and a specific flavor of Ben and Jerry's. Um, so Daryl, what have you had us prepare for you in the green room to make you feel comfortable today? Cappuccino and sushi. A cappuccino, and why, why sushi, Daryl? So sushi is uh, sushi is something that I've always enjoyed. Japanese food in general is is really good, um, and uh, I got to actually live for a year in Tokyo, helping up helping to open up an office over there. And um, the sushi in Tokyo, if you ever get a chance to visit, is absolutely spectacular. It um, all over Tokyo. It comes out of Tokyo Bay that morning, so all the fishermen bring it in first thing, and the restaurants go down to the docks and they buy all the fish. And it's just it's just the freshest, most delicious raw fish you can eat. It's just so good. And I just love it. Wow. That sounds really good. Ginger, how did you do? OK, so. I have plated my sushi. You can see it here. Very nice. So that's it. Now I need to put it back down without spilling anything. Don't spill soy sauce. That will stain. <laughs> and then. OK. Cappuccino, can you oh, see? I okay. personally shaved the chocolate so it wouldn't melt. Spectacular. It's perfect. <laughs> uh, mine is raw in another way. Still in its packet here. Some nice green sushi uh, made in Nairobi. <laughs> Cappuccino was a bit of a stretch. So I've got some Nescafe. I don't know if that's going to hit the mark for you. Mm. Preparing to see some interesting comments on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So hopefully we've got you feeling comfortable, Daryl. Ginger, why don't you take us away so we can learn all about Gig CX? Absolutely. So, okay. We all know about Gig CX, Daryl, as you mentioned before, out in the broader market. But when it comes to the customer experience, what does gig what does gig work mean? In in the yeah 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 how's it how does it fit into gigs how's it how does gig fit into CX? Um, so great question. You know, I think um, there's a term that we use, and it's gig CX. And last last or this year, actually, when we did the um, the 2022 gig CX report. Um, which I think will be in the link so you can take a look at that report. We're going to refer to it a few times, I think, today. Um, that report is, um, it, we talked to a number of industry experts in it, and we did a number of surveys, so there's a lot of great data. Um, but this year, one of the things that a couple people said was that around GigCX, they were spending less time explaining what GigCX was 
and more talk, time talking about the benefits of GigCX and how you could actually leverage it. So that's one big change from the report uh, last year in 2021 to 2022. Um, uh, this year, actually, 72% of the, the folks that we surveyed, of the 400 uh, CX folks surveyed, said that that customer, uh, excuse me, that they uh, used Gig already or that they plan to use it within the next two years. So it's becoming this model that people are recognizing the power of um, and and wanting to figure out how they can use it in their in their CX operation. Um, lots of big companies are using it already, of course. Um, Microsoft is a limitless customer, as is eBay and Unilever and Sony. Um, lots of others that that are also using it. And what they're doing with, within their operations is they started out with some kind of basic ways to do to use Gig within CX. And, um, and now they're expanding those operations into different parts of the business. Um, Microsoft in particular is, uh, they started with some account management type use cases, but they've expanded that out into different usage and, and technical support and, and, and other use cases like that. So super interesting to see how it's evolving in, into the industry and how big, big brands are, are taking, making use of it. I'm curious, why would a company look at using GigCX when they could have like a regular part-time workforce who would then build up more consistent experience. Yeah, you know, so um, I use this stat. I, I, I use this stat a lot, and I, 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 there's eight billion people on the planet, you know, or close to it. Like, there's so many people with so many different skills. Um, I'm not sure that stat is really the relevant bit, though. The way that um, Limitless goes about finding folks for the crowds when we form a crowd, we look for for gig folks. Is we actually look at the brand advocates and the customers of the particular brand. So when you think of a brand like Microsoft or eBay or really any business that's gotten off the ground and has customers, um, there's people that understand the products and the services of that company extraordinarily well. You find them out on the internet, on news groups, and they're already out there kind of helping people discover, well, you know, I'm using this router, but I've got this set up on my home computer, and how do I make these two things work together? And there's lots of people that have figured that out. So. That's the model, actually, is that once you've taken the technology, the GigCX platform, and you flatten the world out and you've made it available to people located wherever they are, you can go after the specific skills and the specific passions that you want to. And so that's the sort of difference. And rather than hiring somebody in a traditional contact center model and then hopefully training them um, you know, uh, so that they get to a level of proficiency uh, before they churn, because um, churn is a big issue in the contact center space. You're actually just looking for the people that have those skills and abilities already and forming them into a crowd to answer questions. So that's the that's one of the big key differences between the two models. So what do you do to find these brand advocates and how, um, you know, what are they looking for in terms of an employment experience when they're working with one of these brands that they that they love? Yeah, it's a that's a good one. Um, who are the experts? Uh, and uh, the experts are are everybody, <laughs> um, but it's the specific people that have those skills that we really want to track down. Um, so, uh, if we take Microsoft as an example, um, if you wanted to find people with a particular skill set, what we do is we talk to. Microsoft and we go and find their brand advocates and their customers and we um, reach out to them. Now, everybody that we reach out to isn't necessarily interested in doing gig work or, or part time work, um, but there's enough of them that you can form a large enough crowd to handle all the inquiries that are coming in from other customers. And the types of people that are looking for gig work are folks that maybe don't have a traditional job um, that are caring for somebody at home, for example. So. Um, you know, moms or caretakers of other people within the home are, are folks that that we find that are that are taking roles. Folks that are retired that get a sense of uh, meaning or value from their lives in terms of um, being able to help others are, are folks. We have a lot of millennials that are maybe just getting into, um, uh, excuse me, uh, millennials that are uh, interested in doing some gig work, some part-time work to augment what they're doing with their full-time jobs. So there's actually a lot of people that are employed full-time and then they'll do gig work on the side because they have a particular skill or a talent. And then um, Generation Z is just coming into the workforce. And so we're seeing some of them wanting to get their feet wet or wanting to learn some, um, uh, earn some extra money 
and they have skill sets um, that are useful for you know particular demographics. Of course, you know everybody's got different things that they're good at, um, but uh, Sony is an example of that, and PlayStation. So you can imagine all the kids that are playing PlayStation and know the PlayStation platform inside and out, and want to earn some extra cash. And so that's a great you know great way to include them into the into the mix and uh, and help other customers that are maybe having a challenge with PlayStation. Um, from, from a business perspective, you know, you're, you're a CX leader in the audience thinking about if I wanted to do, you know, use a gig CX model, what are some of the things that are really important for getting that right? Yeah. Um, so I think one of the things that, and we've already talked a bit about, um, about the different types of users that you're bringing into the operation. But one of the things that, that is something that we talk to customers about or prospects about when they first come on board is a different mindset around how you interact with the folks in a crowd and how you manage getting work done with a crowd as, com as compared to um, workers in a traditional contact center. So a lot of the things that you would typically think about in a contact center um, around hiring and training and managing really change fundamentally when you start thinking about a crowd of experts. A crowd of experts is uh, they're not actually employees, right? They're people that are doing a, a particular piece of work for you. And so when you think about managing, um, training them or, or all that, managing, managing them or, or really managing their time, you're really not doing any of that. So uh, there, we have something called Good Gig, and um, Good Gig is a way that we make sure that um, the experts are being treated fairly, but they're also um, being included in a way that is um, mutually beneficial for the experts and for the customer. And so some of the things that's included in, in that is that the experts decide when they work. So they don't have any scheduled shifts at all. I know some of this is like, it's like mind blowing for, for a typical manager of a contact center. They don't have shifts. The size of the crowd and the desire for people to work and those people being available is actually what covers the customer inquiries. So they they join when they want to join and they look for tickets that they can solve. And they might pop on and see, you know, 10 tickets and they look at them all and they go, I don't really know the answer to any of these. And so they don't answer them. Or they might see one or two and they respond to those tickets. The platform actually protects to a, to a large extent, the platform protects the um, the 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 CSAT scores and the, the service that the customers are getting because it makes sure that particular tickets are getting picked up in the right amount of time. And even if an expert like looks at a ticket and starts it and the baby starts to cry and they jump off and they don't finish the ticket, we actually keep track of that ticket and we'll reroute it to another expert that'll, that'll respond to that ticket in a timely fashion. And so the platform is doing a lot of that management to make sure that this large group of people, this crowd, as it were, um, is, um, doing what needs to get done in order for that customer CSAT to, to be good. And in fact, we see a 10 to 15% um, increase over traditional contact center models when using gig. And that's because of that kind of relationship between um, the customer and the customer. That is, you've got one customer that's uh, serving another customer and helping them out. And it's sort of a collegial kind of a relationship. Um, and uh, yeah, it just creates a, it creates a better atmosphere. And then the platform, like I said, has quite a bit built into it um, to help with the CSAT scores as well. So when you're managing these gig workers, um, along with what you said, is there anything else to know about how to manage them and you know, how that plays in with managing your existing like, full-time, part-time staff? Right. Yeah. So if you if you want to take a look at like how can you take your what you're currently doing for your customers across the board and where where is Gig CX a good fit? So Gig CX is extremely flexible in terms of what it can um, what it can do in terms of how quickly you can scale a crowd up. If you're on the platform already, the limitless platform, you can scale a crowd in about five days, maybe a couple of weeks, depending on what the skill set is that you're looking for. So if you did have a particular topic that was hot for some reason um you know you mentioned the pandemic at the beginning that was obviously something that was extremely um uh it came on us suddenly and, and companies had to respond really quickly but even holiday seasons and things that are planned um you can use gig in a in a way that's very flexible within those models 
Um, so that's so that's one way to sort of think about it is where do you need the flexibility um, for the for the experts? Uh, the other is to take your topics, you know, the things that you're you're dealing with, and usually what we end up doing is consulting with clients around three layers. So you've got your AI layer that's kind of handling. The, the basic questions where you have really good FAQ responses and it's kind of transactional in nature. That is, where's my package? Here's your package. Okay, cool. I'm good. I don't need anything else from you. Um, and then super complex, kind of 360 degree view of the customer. Um, you've fallen through the cracks in the systems and there's no process that's going to help you. Agents are at, at that level and experts are somewhere in between those two um, where you need the ability to, you may have a lot of inquiries coming in about a particular topic and you need the ability to field those, but there's some level of um, importance to it. It tends to be more relational type questions rather than transactional questions, if that makes sense in terms of the distinction. It's not where's my package, but you build me uh, an extra amount of money or um, I have a whole bunch of uh, uh, flight vouchers that I need to exchange or I don't know how to use this platform effectively. I've read all the FAQs, but I need somebody to walk me through that. That's kind of what we do for eBay. Um, we have experts that are doing onboarding for uh, other experts that are selling. And so you've got these, you've got these experts that sell products on a regular basis and they know a lot of things that are, you know, it, it, they can be captured and put into an FAQ on a website, but it's a lot easier and um, just more enjoyable for, for new people on the eBay platform that are just getting into selling to actually communicate with a human being and kind of learn some of those tips and tricks. And so that's another example of how you might carve out different topics and um, start to use it in conjunction with what you're doing already in your customer service operation. We just had a great question pop in um, from one of someone in our audience. How do you manage scheduling if gig workers can manage their schedule hundred percent on their own? And you, you talked a little bit about the, the software, the platform rather helping with that, but in terms of people management, how do you, make sure that you have the right number of people on when you need them. Yeah. So um, there's an interesting, if you take a look at the report on um, page 40, actually, there's a really interesting set of graphs on there. that go through some, um, some data about experts. And one of the interesting things on that set of graphs is a time of day chart and it has the day broken up into three hour segments and um, we basically asked experts when they work and the specific times that they're available isn't really critical. It's actually broken down by percentage. So 24% worked between the hours of 12 a.m. and 3 a.m. 15%, which is the lowest of the brackets, worked between the hours of 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. Um, the point I'm making is that um, the crowds, because they're located all over the world and because they are managing their own time, uh, when you get to the right size, which is what we do for all of our clients, those crowds um, uh, sort of automatically provide coverage across all the different time zones because that's when they can work. And what we find with some of the experts, for example, is that because they know they can get uh, a large set of tickets, maybe at odd hours, and they happen to be awake because they're night owls or whatever, they'll actually log in during those hours and they can go have their, you know, they can pick the ones that they want to pick. They get a better choice selection. So they'll log in for that particular period of time. So I don't want to say it's magic because it's not magic, but uh, the combination of the people that are in the crowd, their own desires to do work and to get paid for that work and the platform managing the level of interactions with them to make sure that the tickets are escalating up in the appropriate way um, uh, makes it all work so that you have very fast response times and very high CSAT. Um, Limitless is watching over the crowds. We do crowd health. So we actually make sure you know that the people are they're logging in regularly, that they're happy, that their CSAT scores are high. Um, and, and, and there's a lot of built in things that the platform does, but we, we actually have, we're sort of like the catcher net at the end of that. So we're, we're making sure that uh, the crowd's the right size to handle all the inquiries and, and things along those lines. So it works, it works. And uh, we, you know, we, we probably can't cover it off in a quick podcast to get to all the details, <laughs> but it does work and um, be happy to talk more to anybody that's you know curious about uh, how this sort of magic, uh, the magic of crowds and no schedules manages to still get good response times and good CSAT scores. So Daryl, I've got a statistic for you now. Um, Ginger and I have been partnering with MIT Technology Review to do a, a large survey of organizations worldwide. 
We learned through that survey that more than 90% of organizations say they will be using Gig CX uh, within the next two, two or so years. So we really see like there's growing interest in this area of yep. flexible working and tapping into the gig economy uh, with the customer experience and, you know, really using those experts out there like eBay does, you know, they know the experience, they're passionate about it, they can walk someone through it. And there's a lot of people out there who want to use their expertise to, to earn an income. So um, last question, and we, we're over time, so let's keep it brief, but what do you see as coming next for GigCX? Yeah, so GigCX is moving into uh, the mainstream in terms of its adoption. Um, I am the as we've talked about a little bit, the usage of uh, gig is increasing, and so I really see it expanding into um, new industries and um, getting picked up by by things like airlines and companies like that. There's been a little bit of of it, but airlines in general haven't haven't used it. Um, uh, companies like the ones I mentioned in consumer electronics has been uh, who's been who's been using it the most so far. But based on the results, I expect that to continue to expand. So um, yeah, big growth. We're seeing, you know, the pandemic sped it up as the pandemic did for a lot of different types of technology. Um, things sped up quite a bit, but we're not really seeing a drop off at all. In fact, we're seeing even more interest as that MIT stat um, shows people really do see it as a model that's going to help them do what they need to do and provide high quality, good CSAT um, and good response times, fast response times and uh, and, and do it in a way where um, uh, you're making this cool connection between your customers and your customers. Uh, that's just kind of difficult to do in a traditional model. Daryl, thank you so much. That brings us to the end of our live stream for today. Um, we will drop the link to the report that Daryl's been mentioning, Limitless Report, report on GigCX into the chat. And then we have three asks of you after this live stream. So please like, please share, and please tag any of your colleagues or friends that you think would find this an interesting theme. Thank you very much and join us again next time.